the anti comintern pact was concluded between Germany and the Empire of Japan in November of 1936, and was directed against the Soviet Union in particular. Joachim von Ribbentrop and the Japanese military attaché in Berlin, General Oshima Hiroshi, worked out a treaty directed against the Comintern. Hiroshi Oshima was a Japanese general in the Imperial Japanese Army. He served as the Japanese ambassador to Germany before and during World War II and was unbittingly a major source of communications intelligence for the Allies. He graduated from the Army War College in May of 1915 and was promoted to captain in the following year. From 1918 he served in Siberia and in 1919 he was appointed assistant military attaché in the Japanese embassy to the Weimar Republic. In 1934 Major Oshima became the Japanese military attaché in Berlin. Described as more German than a German, he spoke the language perfectly and was soon befriended by Joachim von Ribbentrop, Hitler's favorite foreign policy advisor. Oshima's importance for Hitler can be seen in the fact that after the conclusion of the anti comintern pact, the US ambassador in Japan estimated that the agreement was mainly the result of Oshima's work without the participation of the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Oshima's close relationship with Hitler and Ribbentrop gave him unparalleled access for a foreigner to German war plans and national policy. Following the invasion of the Soviet Union in June of 1941, pressure was placed on the Japanese government to join the invasion. In early July of 1942, Ribbentrop tried to convince Oshima to urge his government to join the attack on the Soviet Union. Ribbentrop's main argument being that never again would Japan have such an opportunity as existed at present to eliminate once and for all the Russian colossus in Eastern Asia. A few months later, Oshima delivered Ribbentrop the following official statement from the Japanese government. The Japanese government absolutely recognized the danger which threatens from Russia and completely understand the desire of their German ally that Japan, on her part, will also enter the war against Russia. However, it is not possible for the Japanese government, considering the present war situation, to enter into the war. On the other hand, the Japanese government would never disregard the Russian question. Nevertheless, Oshima made several visits to the Eastern Front and the Atlantic Wall and he met periodically with Hitler and other Nazi leaders. Being a meticulous military officer in training, he wrote detailed reports of the information provided to him by the German government. The reports were sent by radio to Tokyo in the purple diplomatic chipper. Unknown to the Japanese, the purple chipper was broken by the American codebreakers in 1940. Thus, Oshima's reports were read almost simultaneously by his superiors in Japan and by Allied leaders and analysts. Sometimes the Allies read the reports before the Japanese did, as transmission problems between Germany and Japan often held up the reports for hours. Virtually all of Oshima's dispatches were intercepted. Approximately 75 during 1941, 100 in 1942, 400 in 1943, 600 in 1944 and about 300 during the just over four months of 1945 when Germany was at war. 
Oshima was interviewed in 1959 and asked about the security of his transmissions. He said that he had been warned in 1941 that there were signs that Japanese diplomatic messages were being read by the Allies, but that he was convinced that the double encrypting his dispatches, he had ensured they could not be decrypted by the Allies. He died before the Allied decryption of purple messages became common knowledge and so never knew that he had unbeatingly provided the Allies with priceless intelligence. For example, in November of 1943, when Oshima was taken on a four-day tour of the Atlantic Wall fortifications on the coast of France. Upon his return to Berlin, he wrote a detailed 20-page report of his visit, giving an account of the location of every German division and its weaponry. He described tank ditches in detail, armament of turrets located close to the shore, and available mobile forces. That provided valuable intelligence to the planners of the D-Day assault. As the war progressed and Germany began to retreat, Oshima never wavered in his confidence that Germany would emerge victorious. However, in March of 1945, he reported to Tokyo on the danger of Berlin becoming a battlefield and revealing a fear that the abandonment of Berlin may take place another month. In April of 1945, he met with Ribbentrop for the last time and vowed to stand with the leaders of Germany in their hours of crisis. I do not wish to be retreated in the same manner as the other diplomats, merely by reason of great danger from the ravages of war. He proclaimed, but he was informed that evening by the Foreign Ministry Chief of Protocol that all diplomats were to leave Berlin at once by Hitler's order. Oshima subsequently accepted that order, then sent his wife to Bad Gastein, a mountain resort in Austria, and the next day left to join her, together with most of the Japanese diplomatic staff. Less than a month later, Germany surrendered, and Oshima and his staff were taken into custody. They were then deported from Austria to the United States by ship, arriving in July of 1945. Oshima finally returned to Japan in November of 1945. Although he enjoyed freedom briefly in his devastated country, he was arrested in December of 1945 and charged with war crimes. He initially denied ever being close to Hitler and Ribbentrop. When brought before the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, he was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. Oshima was paroled in late 1955 and granted clemency three years later. After his release, Oshima lived in seclusion, refusing invitations from the ruling Liberal Democratic Party to enter into politics. The former ambassador even refused requests for interviews and lectures, but his few remarks made clear that Oshima was a broken, remorseful old man. He called himself a failure who misled the nation and admitted that the Japanese alliance with Germany, which he promoted, was a catastrophic mistake, although his admiration for Hitler as a political leader never seems to have diminished. A neighbor recognized the photograph of the Japanese ambassador and Hitler shaking hands, possibly the photo seen above in Oshima's living room. Oshima finally died in 1975. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.